Thank you and good afternoon. Before we begin the public hearing, I would like to make the following announcement. Due to the continuing threat of public health from COVID-19, City Council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are published in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, Inquirer, and Legal Intelligence prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come and Mr. Clerk, would you please call, take the roll call uh, to take attendance. Members that are in attendance will indicate that you are present when your name is called. And also please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Councilmember Gauthier. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and colleagues and uh, to all of the panelists present. Councilmember Brooks. Councilmember Johnson. I'm present. Councilmember Jones. Councilmember Sanchez. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, I'm present. Councilmember Thomas. I'm present. Chair Bass. Thank you, I am present. And I thank all of my colleagues. A quorum of the committee is present and this hearing is now called to order. And this is the public hearing of the Committee on Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs regarding resolution number 220474. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the title of the resolution? Resolution number 220474, approving the rebuild project for 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023, pursuant to bill number 170206. Thank you. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have for today, everyone uh, who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that the this is a public hearing and is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, Prior to recognizing members for their questions or comments that they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. And in order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Before I call the clerk uh, to call the first panel forward, would any of my colleagues like to make any opening comments? Yes, Madam Chair, I just want to recognize, be recognized as being present. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Councilman Curtis Jones Jr. as present. Thank you, Councilman, for being here today. Um, are there any other comments from my colleagues before we begin? Madam Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, this is Councilmember Thomas. I just wanted to commend you um, for your advocacy and your efforts. I read your letter. Um, it really hit me when I think about um the type of of resources that are needed in that in that area i um spent a lot of time uh, growing up at mallory recreation center which we now call danny rump rec center who i actually played with who rest in peace passed away um i also i'm very familiar with other rec centers um in the eighth district and i think that you're spot on as it relates to your advocacy for this issue uh, i'm not even going to mention one of the rec centers that are in the area where someone asked me to do programming and I told him I just can't bring young people to the space because the space isn't adequate. So I just want to say thank you for your advocacy and for your leadership. This is a bold step that you're, state, you're taking, but I do want you to know that you're not stepping by yourself. I support you and I appreciate your leadership. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, thank you. I really do appreciate your support. I have to say uh, I've gotten a tremendous amount of support from all of my colleagues who rec recognize that um, the level of uh, inequities that have been displayed here by this, the, the actions and the funding that have taken place is absolutely unacceptable. So I really do uh, want to thank you, Councilman, and to all of my colleagues, especially those who reached out and who have been uh, very vocal on this matter. Um, so, um, and that being said, um, we're going to have uh, Mr. Clerk call the panel and witnesses for the uh, the first panel for resolution 220474. 
Tierra Strong and available for questions are Raymond Smeriglio, Angela Dixon, and Aisha Herring Miller. Good afternoon. I see you are connected and ready to proceed. Please state your name for the record and begin your testimony. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Kira Strong, Executive Director of the Rebuild Initiative of the City of Philadelphia. Um, pleased to be back to continue the conversation from our uh, hearing last Tuesday um, at your request. Thank you. Um, and so last week, for those who may, um, may, may not be as aware, um, last week we had uh, our hearing uh, to discuss the passage of this resolution, uh, the rebuild project statement. And there was a question asked by myself uh, about the amount of funding that was distributed in this $425 million program. And so um, out of approximately $425 million spent by rebuild, the average amount received by historically underfunded and underserved communities of color was over $51 million. The two exceptions were Councilwoman Sanchez's district, who received 46 million, and far in the last, my district, which received 31 million, which means it had been funded by about 15 to 29 million dollars less than similar districts with need. And so the question still does remain how could this be when decisions were made based on poverty, crime, and blight? And so in the interest of transparency and fairness, we ask once again for any and all scoring information that shows how the decision making was made, what the process was. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as I think you're aware in the beginning of rebuild, uh, there certainly were um, data, was data pulled uh, around crime, poverty and health indicators of neighborhoods across Philadelphia to help inform decisions on the sites selected for rebuild. Um, I understand, I know a little bit from my time, I wasn't part of all those conversations, but that many conversations were had with individual district council people to really tap into the expertise and the knowledge that district council people have of their sites uh, and their neighborhoods. Um, but certainly, um, the data was a beginning starting conversation point is my understanding. Um, but then the list that was part of the rebuild ordinance in 2017 with the 72 sites that were selected was agreed upon with each district council person at that time. And that's still the list of 72 that we are working from now. And so, uh, again, I'm going to ask you very specifically for the information on how those decisions were made, because one of the things I want to note for the record, for our viewing audience in particular, is that as decisions were made, there was not a price tag attached to all of those decisions. As we passed project statements in the past, we did not have what the, we had the uh, information on what, what the project was but we did not have the information on how much the project cost. And it was only when we asked for the uh, um, um, for, for that more comprehensive uh, amount of information that we found out that we were so underfunded, like I said, between 15 and almost $30 million other areas that had, uh, that are similar. So these are areas like Germantown, Nicetown, Tioga, North Philadelphia, Feltonville, uh, West Oak Lane, uh, Logan, and Albany. And so the suggestion that there is not an, a, a similar amount of need in these uh, rec centers, which are really falling apart, is, um, you know, it, it's, it's just absurd. So I'd, I'd really like for the committee to receive in writing the matrix in terms of how those decisions were made. Uh, Councilman, I think we could go back and see if there are, um, there's data or information from that time back in 2016 or so in terms of the data on each site. Um, I'm not sure exactly what was shared in those meetings at that point, but we can certainly see what we can find. Um, I do know that those conversations were really important. I do remember uh, district council people being, um, you know, very emphatic, and I think rightly so, that, you know, you each have knowledge of your sites and the neighborhoods. Absolutely. And that 
that that list is 72, you know, that was really I, uh, my impression at the time was that was a very collaborative effort and one that people walked away from feeling very good about the sites that were selected. I think that um, in terms of budgets, you know, the goal was always how do we meet the need of the site to the best of our ability um, in, you know, site specific. So really trying to make sure that we could meet, you know, come come to that site with a budget that adequately addressed its needs. And, you know, frankly, I think um, you all are aware of this. We've all had some tough conversations over the past, I'd say, year as we've responded to the reality of construction pricing um, during the pandemic and, and currently. And also, I think, frankly, as the years pass, the amount of need um, at sites across our city. So I think it uh, certainly is a conversation we've had with each district council person, and there have been some tough choices to make on what kind of fixes happen where. Um, the one thing I think I would just add, too, is I do know the expertise of the Parks and Rec and the library staff uh, were leaned on heavily back in the inception of rebuild and really thinking about what was really needed at each site and what the approximate um, spend or budget for that specific site would be. So I hope that that's somewhat helpful as well. Um, I, I really want to get the information in terms of what was the decision making process and how it ended up that areas in Germantown. So, for example, I have Worcester Playground, Happy Hollow, Waterview, um, um, you know, uh, Belfield, uh, Lonnie Young, all of which are in significant need. And so uh, that's just in Germantown. Germantown has a significant issue with gun violence, um, with uh, poverty rates, uh, all of the things that are said uh, by Rebuild in terms of the decision-making factors have been completely ignored. And so I'd like to know, uh, or, or maybe they haven't been ignored, but please tell me how the decision making was made and when can we expect to receive whatever you all have um, regarding this matter? Because this is not, you know, I just want to be clear that this is a matter of transparency and it's a matter of fairness. And so we can move forward with today, but this is not going to be something that's going to go away. So we will be right back here in the fall if we do not have this information uh, provided to the committee. And I want to be absolutely clear about that. So I can't speak um, to Worcester um, or some of the other sites you mentioned, Belfield and Happy Hollow are the two sites um, among uh, your other, I think you have six sites total that are on the rebuild list. Um, but we certainly do understand and know that both Belfield and Happy Hollow, um, you know, certainly do have need. Uh, Happy Hollow currently has, I believe, $11 million budgeted um, to it. Um, and Belfield, I think, is right around three million. Um, so we do those budgets were made at the again back in you know 2016-17 in an attempt to address the need of those specific sites and making sure that we're able to respond appropriately to the needs in those sites. Um, and obviously, those neighborhoods, as you mentioned, certainly are high need neighborhoods where those resources are really important. Can we talk for just a quick second about Belfield, which is the, uh, to date, was the only site that was scheduled to receive a new facility uh, based on the number that you gave us of $31 million. And I want to be clear about the amount of the cost of, of um, I'm sorry, not Belfield, Barrett. Barrett. Uh, can you give us an, an idea? You gave me a scare the there, Councilwoman. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, uh, you know, we, we certainly could use a lot of improvement over at Belfield, including uh, having the pool open, which we were uh, informed this week uh, or last week that the pool would not be open yet again uh, for some reason. And that's a whole nother issue that we need to bring up with Parks and Rec. Really just around fairness, around making sure that, that every neighborhood is treated fairly. But can you go over the numbers regarding Barrett Playground and the spending and the cost there? Because... Um, as we've been talking the last couple of days and, and more recently today, I was informed that what we had expected to spend at Barrett was uh, that now it's uh, it's it increased even more to be able to get this one project done. Can you review that, please, for us? Sure. Barrett um, Playground, which, as you know, we have a great nonprofit partner there that's working on advancing the work on that site. Um, and that 
project started with a $10 million budget. Uh, and Councilman, as you know, and you were very helpful, um, we uh, secured RACP with your support of additional billion dollars there. And we've been able to bring an additional three to raise that budget um, to a total of 14.5 um, to address the needs of the site. Because as I know you've mentioned, the team came to us and said, hey, with a $10 million budget, you know, we would not be able to accommodate the new full-size gym that the community really wants. And we all knew that, you know, the goal was really to be able to respond to that need. And you were very, you know, flexible. I think we had a conversation around how do we make sure that those resources were there um, for that facility. So at this point, there is a $14.5 million budget for that site. And we anticipate that um, encompassing a brand new building with a full size gym, um, new playground elements, uh, new basketball court. And I think the goal is a phase two um, for a walking track for the um, for okay. the rest of the site. So, that, OK, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page because I was advised that that number had had changed. That it was more than 14. So it's about to, to, the best of your knowledge, it is 14. Yes, to the best of my knowledge, I think we're at 14.5. Just look at my notes here. Okay. And so, um, and so we will be expecting to receive that other information. The other information being the um, decision making process. Yes. Um, I do want to clarify, Councilman, I, just to be, I wasn't those initial conversations where I know the data points, which yes, we can absolutely find kind of the, the ranking of the data. Um, but I know that those were the sites in the 72 approved list from council. We're certainly had in conversation, um, I know with you at that time with the data points. So I do feel certain I can likely find those data points. I'm not sure beyond that uh, what notes there are from those conversations, but happy to share what I can find. Okay, all right, well, we will, be uh, glad to review what it is that what, whatever information that you can find and make uh, available to us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to say that that uh, we made some progress. Um, you know, in our quest to receive a uh, better um, uh, to to receive a, a level of fairness and equity uh, in terms of what the eighth district will receive versus what um, you know what was uh, uh, provided uh, through rebuild previously. So I'm I'm happy that we've made some progress on that front. Uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to work with you on that and work with the administration because I think that, you know, these are problems that are solvable and um, we certainly don't want to hold things up and we want to uh, try to keep things moving, but it really does require that we're, require that we're all working together. So, okay. Absolutely. Um, is there, are there any other comments or questions from members of the committee? Councilwoman Sanchez? Yes, ma <clears throat> Madam Chair, real quickly, I want to thank you and, and thank Kiera. And look, we uh, <clears throat> this has been a, a tough um, process for, for, all, for all of us as we talk about equity. And, and I'm glad that you're going to go back and look at some of the scoring because I know in the beginning I disagreed with some of the scoring. I just want to remind the administration, this is in a context of we're spending, and I know it has federal and state money, but we're spending $300 million on a park in Pence Landing. We're investing $150 million at FDR Park. And then we're only spending $400 million for every other park in the city, right? And those th that's just the reality. So it's I understand the context of your frustration because it's sort of like we don't blink at the $300 million. And all of us want to see that park there because we know it's a game changer for downtown. We don't blink when you talk about $150 million for FDR Park, but we, we need that same sense of urgency for those smaller pocket parks. You know, I know, Councilwoman, you're doing events almost every day in those small parks. And for those folks, you know, that is their, uh, as Councilman Jones always said, that is their, you know, Six Flags. That is their Dorney Park. That is the, those types of things. And so I, I know a lot of these decisions were made before Kiara, and as she's mentioned, construction costs have increased. But if we really want to look at equity, um, then we have to do it in that context. If, if we don't blink at those big numbers for one park in one neighborhood, then we should not um, blink around the need in, in other neighborhoods. And, and so it's, it warrants the conversation, the context of the conversation. And I hope the administration, we have a pretty robust capital budget 
And in addition to rebuild, I think there's opportunities through our capital office for so for some attention to be given to those vital small parks. So um, thank you, you know, Madam Chair. I know this is this is um, not for the faint of heart, uh, but this is part of the advocacy work that we get elected to do, and, and appreciate your advocacy in this effort. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councilwoman. It's been uh, it's been challenging and interesting um, to work through this process. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gauthier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to thank you for um, asking the tough questions and forcing tough conversations around equity um, while also acknowledging um, the very tough position that um, Kira has been placed in and wanted to recognize Kira too for always being willing to work through um, these, these issues. And so thank you both for um, having this conversation and for working it out. Thank you. Well, I think I thank Kara for providing the information because I've been asking for a long time now, um, you know, through different segments of the administration and haven't gotten it. So I thank you for, for, for providing. I see another hand up, but I can't tell who that is. Um, I think it's Councilwoman Garthier. I think I just need to put your hand down. Okay. It's a full um, hand raise. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking it down. Okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, are there any other questions or comments from members of the committee? Yeah, this I is Council Member Thomas. Quick question. Yes, Council Member. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, just, I just wanted to know because we've been going through this process with the administration for some time, and I think that the the yes. requests of the chair um, have been pretty simple, and we haven't they haven't been met. So I'm wondering, uh, because of the negligence that we've seen, um, what would be the what will be the consequences of us not getting this bill um, passed and, and, and out of committee and voted upon um, uh, as quickly as possible? Like why once we're, we're being held up because we don't have adequate information. So because we don't have adequate information and because there are questions about the disbursement of resources, we haven't been able to move forward with this bill. What is the consequences are going to be like? Are we looking at a, at a uh, well, you should be able to understand my question. I would love to hear your answer. Well, well, the, uh, the, the no, not you, Madam Chair. I, I'm uh, sorry, I wasn't. I, I'm talking to the administration because you know if they can get oh, us the okay. information that I'm we need, answer. <laughs> yeah, we we can be good to go if they can get us the information that we need. But they're not getting it, so this is going to create, I'm assuming, some um, consequences. So what what are those consequences, and you know how soon can we rectify this stuff so we can put ourselves in a position to move forward? Well, let, before Kira answers, I do want to say, Councilman, that we do. We have uh, um, made progress. And so um, I don't, you know, listen, we're not 100% there, but I feel very, very comfortable with where we are. And um, I have, I feel very comfortable that at the end of the day, we will be receiving on par with what other districts, other black and brown districts have, have been receiving uh, through rebuild. So we're on a path and, uh, you know, we're, we will get there, I believe, uh, with, uh, uh, we'll get halfway there uh, very soon, and then we'll make our, uh, you know, have some additional announcements, um, you know, later in the year. And so, uh, again, I feel very comfortable that uh, that's going to happen. I'm going to take the administration at their word um, that they are going to come through and uh, do uh, what is the right thing to do, what is the fair thing to do for all residents of the city of Philadelphia, and particularly those who live in these neighborhoods that have really been struggling. And, uh, you know, it's our job to make sure that they get their fair share. And I know that you, as a district council member, have a, a very much have an interest in that and would like to um, make sure that that happens. You've been around, you're as a coach, you've seen these rec centers. I mean, you know what it's like over at Lonnie Young and the basketball courts and the, you know, the um, conditions of the facility in general, that and Belfield and Happy Hollow and, you know, so many more, uh, you know, I could just go on and on. There's a uh, heritage in North Philadelphia. There's Jerome Brown in Tioga. There's, you know, so many others uh, in Germantown and Nicetown. Um, and they've been neglected for a long time. So we're going to make sure that uh, we are on par with a fair funding uh, from rebuild that 
we um, uh, are entitled to as that the citizens are entitled to as taxpayers. So thank you, Madam. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And so unless there are any additional questions. Uh, um, and I don't see any other hands up. OK, there being no further questions from members of the committee and no other witnesses to testify. Well, I will ask again if there is anyone else present in this hearing whose name we have failed to call and that wishes to offer testimony on resolution on the resolution being considered today. OK, hearing none, I want to thank all the panels and witnesses for their participation, Kira. Uh, we thank you for your opinion, and I now invite you to please disconnect from the meeting before we go into our public meeting. And we will now pause the proceedings briefly as you leave this hearing. Thank you, Kira and her team. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. This now concludes the public hearing of the committee. We will now go into a public meeting to consider the action to be taken on the resolution before this committee today. Um, Mr. Clerk, can we have you do another roll call to establish a quorum? Councilmember Gauthier. Present. Councilmember Brooks. Councilmember Johnson. Present. Councilmember Jones. Present. Councilmember Sanchez. Present. Councilmember Thomas. Present. Chair Bass. And I am present. And thank you. A quorum of the committee members is present. Uh, the Queen is Councilwoman Gauthier for a motion on resolution number 220474. Um, one second. I just need to find my script. Sorry. That's all right. Okay, ready now. Sorry for not being ready before. All right, it's okay. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that resolution number 220474 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit consideration of the resolution at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that council member Jones seconds the motion. It's been moved and properly seconded that resolution number 220474 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit consideration of the resolution at the next session of council. All of those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. And this concludes the business before the Committee on Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs. I want to thank you all very much for your attendance and your patience and your understanding in this very important matter of equity and fairness. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Bye-bye. Thank you.